is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is wonderful to welcome each one of you to worship at First Ozark this morning, both for those who are joining us in person and those who are listening on the radio and those who are joining us online. There is much going on in the life of the church, and so I'd direct your attention to the bulletin for a few announcements. Um, first of all, the beautiful flowers today are placed in honor of Sandy Bittman's birthday by her mother. Also, um, we'd like to thank everyone who came out for Make a Difference Day yesterday. It was a wonderful time to be in service to our community, and so much was done. We'll have evening worship this evening at 6 p.m. in the chapel. Also on Wednesdays at high noon, we're continuing on in our Gospel of John Bible study, and this Wednesday will be our final week of that study. Trunk or Treat is taking place on Saturday, October 30th this year, and there are two ways we are looking for people to be involved. The first is to decorate a trunk and hand out candy that the church provides. If you're interested in doing that, please call the church office this week so that we know that you will be doing so. And also, we are looking for as much candy as you can imagine. And so... As you are able to, um, please bring candy into the church office workroom this week, anytime as well. Um, Saturday, or rather, Stewardship Commitment Sunday this year is on Sunday, November the 7th. In your bulletins today, you have an RSVP sheet um, for signing up for the lunch to happen on Commitment Sunday. And so we ask that you fill those out so we might have a good idea of how many folks will be joining us. And also today we have a very special guest with us. As part of our stewardship campaign, we are inviting folks who are in mission to our community to speak with us about their work. And today we have Paige Knight from the Mary Hill Family Service Center to share. Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Please excuse my voice. Peanut dust kind of gets to me each year. So I would just like to tell you that I love talking about the Mary Hill Family Service Center. As the director, I answer to a board. I'm expected to be a good steward with our finances, ethical policies, with our programs, educationally or programmatically. And I like to think that I try very hard in doing what my board expects me to do. Christ also expects us to be a good steward. And I'd like to say thank you so much. You, this church, you guys have been so amazingly generous to our food pantry. So let me tell you just a little bit about our food pantry. We are able to help everyone in Ozark and in Dale County. And we can provide food items from every food group. And we can help food with seniors, with adults, and with children. We can help people that have stoves or just have microwaves or those with some, some, some permanent housing insecurities. In fact, because of you, we have become a referral source for 211, DHR, Spectre Care, the Senior Center, and other agencies in Ozark and Dale County. So I'd like to say thank you to that. I'd also like to share some scripture with you, if you would. It's Pro Proverbs 22, 9. And I don't know if you're into Proverbs, but it seems like every time I read something in Proverbs, I get a different meaning out of it. It's like God has a way of just touching us in a special way. But Proverbs 22, 9 says, The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. I would like to thank you for sharing of your generous support to the Mary Hill Family Service Center. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paige. And as we continue on in worship, let us prepare our hearts as we hear this prelude.
us join together in our responsive reading. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from the Lord. Trust in the Lord at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God. Our trust is in the Lord. We worship God's name. Let us worship God. Let us join in prayer together. You are our rock and our strength, O God. And in you rests our deliverance. You defend us in the midst of adversity. You protect us from ultimate harm. You humble the mighty with acts that manifest your transcendent power. The lowly you comfort with your tender embrace. We gather this day saved by your mercy. Hear now our praises as we herald your greatness. Amen. We invite you to rise for a hymn of praise, I Stand Amazed in the Presence, number 371.
Let us affirm our faith. The Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invite our ushers to the front to take our morning offering. We give thanks for your generosity, continue to give to the life of the church through your tithes and offerings. You're welcome to continue to give. If you'd like to give online or you can mail your check in or you can give this morning. Let's ask God's blessing upon the money that is given. Gracious God, we give you thanks for how you watch over and take care of us. Lord, from all that we have comes from you. Help us to be a light to this community. Help us to share your good news. We give you thanks for the tithes and offerings that are given. May this money help to strengthen your church in this community and throughout the world. In the strong name of Christ we ask, amen.
invite you to remain standing for our hymn of preparation, Rescue the Perishing, number 591. as we go to God in prayer. Gracious God, you are the God of goodness and light in a world full of so much heaviness. We praise you for the ways your light breaks through. We come before you with the needs of the world, the needs of our communities, of our families, and of ourselves. Where there is brokenness, may you bring healing. Where there is grief, may you bring comfort. Where there is violence, may you bring justice and peace. For all those whose hearts and bodies are crying out in need today, 
We pray that they may be met with your abundance. And may the people of your church be part of bringing about your will on earth. As we pray in the words your son gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is several passages from the story of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, 8 and 9, 12 and 17. Chapter 2, verse 9. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. And chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The scripture says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Then they said to him, tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you 
What I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah sent out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Melanie. Melanie and I have been preaching a series based upon Adam Hamilton's book, The Walk. We've also been studying this book in Sunday school, The Walk, Five Essential Practices of the Christian Life, Worship and Prayer, Studying, Serving, Giving, Sharing. Today we focus upon sharing, going fishing, reflecting light. Hamilton asked, have you ever recommended a restaurant to someone? Recently, he was on a flight to Kansas City, and the flight attendant asked, is anyone from Kansas City? Several hands went up. She explained that she was going to be there for a furlough for a few days, and she wanted to try out some of the barbecue. And she wanted to know, did anyone recommend a barbecue place? And the people got quite animated as they argued for their face one. Some were arguing for Joe Stack or Q39 or a hundred other barbecue places in Kansas City. Hamilton noticed that when people share positive things about what they like, what they love, what they find that are meaningful, their positive feelings increase. And the same thing happens with our faith. When we share our faith, those positive feelings increase, and our passion for God grows. That is, unless our name is Jonah. Now, Jonah, when he shared his faith, it only decreased. So I want to lift up Jonah today as an example of what not to do. When you think about Jonah, perhaps you think about the story of Jonah being swallowed by the whale. Is that what you think of? Many people, that's all they think of. Once a little girl, she was at school and they were talking about the story of Jonah and the whale. And the teacher said that that could never, ever happen. It's impossible. Well, the little girl remembered the stories from the Bible and she said, well, I believe it's true. And the little girl said that when she died and goes to heaven, she's gonna ask Jonah about that. And the teacher said, well, what if Jonah didn't go to heaven? And the little girl said, well, then you ask her. <laughs> the story of Jonah. There are just layers and layers that we can think about and reflect upon. Jonah, he was unwilling to be used by God. And as we reflect upon this story, perhaps we see ourselves in Jonah and how unwilling he was to share the message to go and to be a fisher of men. Matthew 4, 19. Come to me, all of you who seek to be disciples, and I will make you fishers of men. Fish for people and to reflect the light. God commissioned Jonah. The word of the Lord came to him. This was a familiar saying. We find prophets like Isaiah and Amos. Now, we don't know exactly how God's word came to him, whether it was a vision or a dream or an audible voice. But one thing is very clear. God's message came to Jonah, and he had a job to do, but he did not want to do that. And what about us? When did we first hear the message of God? Why are we believers? Hamilton, he remembers the first person who shared the message of God with him was Sarah Hamilton, his grandmother, a devout Roman Catholic. And he's also a Christian because of Harry Thornton, 
a man who went door to door inviting people to church. What about you? Why are you a Christian? My parents took me to church when I was just a child. I thought I was born in the church. We were always there. When I was about eight years old, I never forget, there was a terrible storm in my hometown of Jacksonville, and a big tree fell on the house. And I was so scared, thinking I was going to die. I was going to go to hell and be separated from God forever. I remember talking to my mom about this, and she said, well, I'll tell you what, you need to talk to the preacher, Reverend Bloodsworth, about this. I don't know why she didn't want to talk to me herself. So the next Sunday, I went and talked to the preacher, and he explained to me on the basis of Revelation 3.20 that Christ was standing, knocking on the door of my heart, and I had a choice to either leave that door shut or to open up the door through faith. Well, I opened that door through faith in Jesus Christ, and he became my Lord and Savior. What's your story? Are there people all around you that would point to you as saying that you're the one who shared with them that led them to faith in Christ? How do we understand this story of Jonah? Some commentaries refer to this story as symbolic, that Jonah representing Israel. And Israel was unwilling to share with its neighbors the message of God. Judgment came upon them, and they were led away into captivity. Nineveh, it was the largest city of the Assyrians, over 200,000 people. Great wickedness. They were enemies of the Jews. And we know that Jonah wanted no part of his job. Frederick Buechner points out in his book, peculiar treasures that God told Nineveh to go and to preach and to tell them to turn from their ways and get saved. Jonah, he took a big whiff of that like a man's expression who smelled a septic tank that was in trouble. In the first place, mm, is right, in the first place, the Ninevites were foreigners and they were off his beat. In the second place, he did not want them in any way to become believers. He did not want them to be exposed to God's love and grace and mercy. So he was unwilling to do what God had asked him to do. And we find right off that God took the initiative to call Jonah. He is the son of a famous prophet, Amittai. So what do you think about Jonah? He was between a rock and a hard place, not knowing what to do or where to turn. So he went on a cruise. When God told him to go to Nineveh, he went in the opposite direction. Come on. Why do you think he did this? He was having a crisis of faith. Have we ever had a crisis of faith? John Wesley the founder of our Methodist movement, he had a crisis of faith. At one point, he thought maybe he should stop preaching because of his lack of faith. And he asked the Moravian preacher, Peter Borler, what he thought. And he encouraged him to preach faith until he has it. And then because he has it, he will preach faith. Now, he was meaning not for Wesley to be insincere, what he meant by that, by talking about his little faith, that it would grow and increase. That's why the fifth essential practice of the Christian life that he recommends is sharing. Let us be about sharing our faith with others. When was the last time we witnessed to someone? It's so important that we are fishers for people, that we share the good news of Jesus Christ we share his love and joy and peace with those all around us. Now, why did he not want to go to Nineveh? Because he hated those in Nineveh. He was prejudiced. And he did not want them to repent and accept God's new life of hope and peace. It was sinful for Jonah to choose not to follow God's direction. So often, perhaps, we think about sin and those things that we commit. 
whether it's lying, cheating, gossiping. But sin is also what we choose not to do, what we omit to do. And it was sinful for Jonah to choose not to follow God's will. Sin, it brings consequences upon our lives and those around us. There was a great storm on the sea. And the sailors, they wanted to know what's going on. Now, even though Jonah was a wayward preacher, he knew that it was his fault. And he confesses to them that he was a Hebrew and that he worshiped the Lord God who created the lands and the sea. We can learn from Jonah. Don't do what Jonah did. Let us joyfully and enthusiastically follow God's will and seek to share with others the message that we know is true in Jesus Christ. I know there are some football teams that want to use the Matthew 5, 16 as their theme. Let your light so shine before others. They see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. To help each of us to realize that we have a platform, that we all have those that we can influence. Oh, Jonah, he had those he could influence. But unfortunately, he head off for the opposite direction. There was a terrible storm, and he volunteers to be thrown overboard. Jonah finds deliverance in the midst of punishment. Jonah deserved to be punished. And before we're too harsh upon Jonah, is there a little bit of Jonah in each of us? When was the last time God asked us to go and to share our faith with someone? How did we respond? So often we think about Jonah, we think about him being swallowed by the great fish or the whale. What do you think about that? I believe that God can do the impossible. There's nothing too big for our God. But I wonder about this story. It is intriguing. Even Jesus referred to it in Matthew 12, that Jonah... He was in the belly of the well for three days and three nights. There's one greater coming than Jonah, Jesus, our hope and salvation. When you think about Jonah being inside that whale, I wonder what he said. Don't you think he negotiated with God to make a deal? Oh, God, if you will just deliver me, I'll go to Nineveh. There was once a man who fell off the side of a cliff and on his way down, he grabbed a hold of a small push. And he cried out to God, if you will just save me, God, I'll go to church, and I'll tithe, and I'll witness. I'll serve you the rest of my days. Just save me. And he heard a voice. This is your maker. I have heard you. I will rescue you. Let go. And the man looks yeah, he didn't laugh, though. He sees this is hundreds of feet down. And he shakes his head, and he looks up. Is there anybody else up there? <laughs> the man was afraid. He was unwilling to take a chance, to take a risk. Oh, we have to take a chance, a risk, and trust and obey. And Jonah was unwilling to trust and obey. We can learn from Jonah let us remember that God is trustworthy. And finally, we see that the well does what any self-respecting well would do who has a complaining preacher, must have caused indigestion. And then he burps him up and he swims to safety. God uses Jonah in spite of Jonah. Jonah was no Billy Graham. He must have rented out a football stadium it was packed. Simple message, direct to the point, succinct without hope. In 40 days, God will destroy Nineveh. Wow. And there was a dramatic outpouring of God's spirit. People repented from the king to the city leaders, everyone. What a mighty outpouring of God's spirit. Now, you would think any preacher would be so thankful and overjoyed but not Jonah. Now, who is God calling us to share the message of Christ with? 
Who are those Ninevites in our lives? Who are those people that are, we think about, well, I don't want to go and share with them. God is calling us to go and to share the good news. And there are so many all around us who need to hear a word of hope and peace and joy, of new life through Jesus Christ. I appreciate that even after he, he shared, Jonah becomes angry. Now, why is he angry? Because he knows that God was like this. He knew that God was loving and merciful and kind. That God is slow to anger and quick to forgive. But Jonah, he is hard-hearted. That's why I lift him up as an example of what not to do. Let us learn lessons from Jonah and seek to be about catching people for Christ and reflecting God's light. Hamilton encouraged us as think about our five fingers, like five people. Who are five people that you could share your witness with? Maybe co-workers, friends, neighbors. That's the challenge. Five fingers, five people, one year. I encourage you to do that, to share your faith, to invite someone to church. And in sharing your faith with others, our faith grows. Let us seek to be the people of God for such a time as this. Catching people, going fishing, reflecting light. That's the invitation. That's our challenge, to be the people that God has called us to be and to reach out with his good news and to not be like Jonah. Let us seek to do that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're invited to respond in faith and commitment to say yes to our Lord's free gift of salvation or to not be like Jonah and invite others to receive his message. Whatever decision that Christ will lay upon our hearts as we stand together and sing our hymn invitation, trust and obey, hymn number 467.